Today, I want to preview Baylor and Oklahoma and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner shit. <laughs> What's up, kid folks? It's RJ Young, not on Step Milk. Sit here and like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always daily related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Charlie Brewer is that dude, and he's one of the best kept secrets in America, but not in Texas. His younger brother, Cade, plays tight end at UT, but he's hardly the first Brewer to play for the Longhorns, and Charlie wanted to play there. Charlie and Cade's dad, Robert, was the last walk on quarterback to start for the Longhorns at the Cotton Bowl. He was named 1982 Cotton Bowl MVP and won the 1981 Southwest Conference title. As a senior at Lake Travis, Charlie set the all-time completion percentage for high school quarterbacks at 77.4% and was named AP Texas Player of the Year in 2016. After leading the Cavaliers to a 15-1 record at a 6A and a 6A title, we also have all of these other accolades to go with him. Brewer was named an All-American by USA Today to Dave Campbell Football Super Team, 6A1 First Team All-State and District MVP. He went 263 for 340 passing for 3,908 yards, 746 yards on the ground, 63 TDs. The Cavs set a school record for points in a game with 51.9 with him starting as the quarterback. Brewer didn't even have a Power 5 offer after all of this, though. He committed to SMU, and Matt Rule decided to attend a playoff game to see Brewer play, but missed him. Brewer had already pulled, uh, had been pulled, after engineering a blowout. So Rule offered him without ever seeing him play live, which is kind of remarkable in this age. Brewer is deadly accurate, but you can see that from the completion percentage. He set the highest mark by a freshman in the Big 12 with 68.1% completions. Only Heisman winner Robert Griffin III was higher in Bears history at 72.4%. Now, on the other side, Oklahoma State has Spencer Sanders, and Spencer Sanders was named Mr. Texas Football by Dave Campbell's Texas Football and Texas Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior at Denton Ryan. He went 46-6 and six as a starter while passing for over 3,800 yards and rushing for over 1,300 yards as a senior. In six games this year, though, the 18th-ranked Bears have forced 10 turnovers, and that's key, as many as they totaled all of last year. Junior defensive end James Lynch is a menace, while 333-pound Bravian Roy is big and tall havoc. Yes, Chuba Hubbard has already rushed for 1,094 yards, which is 268 more than Ohio State tailback J.K. Dobbins and 269 more then Wisconsin battering Ram and Heisman hopeful Jonathan Taylor. And, of course, Tylen Wallace ranks fifth in receiving yards this season with 703. Now, Lynch has 11.5 tackles for loss, including 8.5 sacks. His sack total is the same as the consensus mock draft first-round pick and Ohio State defensive end Chase Young. Roy has made 23 tackles with 5 tackles for loss, 1 sack, and 5 quarterback hurries. And while Brewer's skill players aren't as dynamic as Sanders is, Sanders is a turnover machine with eight picks to just 10 passing TDs in six games. Hell, the Cowboys have just 13 turnovers this season. Well, 13 is a lot, but Sanders is responsible for 11 of them. And that old issue line, it ain't very good. Hadn't been great since K-State, honestly. Add to this, Baylor is holding teams to 17.8 points per game, which is really good. Baylor's in the top 10 in team sacks with 23, but ranks 87th in third down defense, allowing conversions at 41.86% of the time, which you think the Cowboys might be able to exploit, but on the other side, Oklahoma State ain't much better at 89th, giving up about the same percentage of third down conversions as Baylor, so the defense are kind of equal in there. And then there's the question of coaching. Will Mike Gundy coach his boys out of a game with some stupid special teams play? Will Matt Rule actually trust his coordinators to dial up something nasty on either side of the ball? Is Jim Knowles really up for this? Because the thing that we have seen from Jim Knowles is not necessarily great, you know? I mean, you're talking about maybe you did something nice against Tulsa, but you got to remember Tulsa went in to halftime with a lead in that game, and Tulsa ain't great offensively. As a matter of fact, they might be absolutely bad offensively. So for Jim Knowles to run his three-man front and junk defense out there against, well, the way that that defense is supposed to be run— you're seeing at Baylor is going to be interesting because 
I believe Charlie Brewer right now is the best pro prospect playing football in the Big 12. And I also think that the kid knows exactly what it means to win. And he does that thing that I like quarterback to do, which is make all of the skill players around him better. You'll notice I have not yet to mention, I have yet to mention a wide receiver at Baylor. And I'm going to keep that going to basically prove this point. Yes, they need to be able to run the ball. And certainly you have to have receivers that can catch the ball. But so much of Baylor is Charlie Brewer. And when he's on, he's on. And going into the game against Texas Tech, which they won because of a botched call by the referees, for which Kirby Hocutt picked up a $25,000 fine after, you know, criticizing the referees when he was actually right in what he was saying and how the rule was misinterpreted. You saw Charlie Brewer throw three picks in that game, right? But he hadn't thrown any picks before that game. And you talk about a Tech team that's got 12 turnovers, which is really good. It's actually up there with Clemson, big boys. And they got a DB in Douglas Coleman who's got six interceptions. So that might be the best secondary that he faces all season when it comes to takeaways. And when you're looking at, yeah, Oklahoma State, they only got one dude leading with one interception. And he ain't the guy that you thought it might be, A.J. Green. It's difficult to play defensive back in this league. I get that. It's difficult to play safety in this league. My goodness, I've been watching Oklahoma safeties play football for the last six games. And... Going back to 2017, I hadn't really seen much greatness. I say all this to say that, right? It might actually come down to who can play better defense or offense, depending on who you're talking about, right? Because if Oklahoma State's defense can play with Baylor's offense, you got to believe that they're going to win, and Vegas does because they're a three-point favorite with this game being played at Stillwater. But you can't continue to run Chuba Hubbard 35 times a game and expect to have something left later on the season. Because right now we're talking about an Oklahoma State team that should be favored in every game it plays left, except perhaps two, right? Depending on how you feel about them playing Iowa State and, of course, Oklahoma. So they're looking at perhaps a double-digit win season and should be shooting for a nine-win season at a minimum. They can get this W against what would be their signature or, or a team that could be their signature win. Because Baylor, whether we like it or not, is 6-0. And yes, Chuba Hubbard is that dude and Tylen Wallace is that dude, but it doesn't matter if Spencer Sanders puts the ball on the ground or throws the ball to the team in green. Both things he's capable of doing and might do a lot of against a Baylor defense that just turns these offensive lines into chum. They sack you like it's their job, like you are their brown bag special. They fly to the football, but I know. They don't have Clay Johnston anymore, who was the heart and soul of their defense and a guy who really did help that defense get better each and every year and had 58 tackles before he suffered a season-ending injury. So, yeah, they're susceptible at that position. But that doesn't change much for them with the two guys that I highlighted before in James Lynch and Bravion Roy. So can Charlie Dickey's offensive line Keep those, those dudes off of Spencer Sanders behind. And can they open up enough holes for Chuba Hubbard to do what he does best, which is flash that 10-second speed and take some of these plays to the house, get these one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Tylen Wallace against these Baylor DBs, and perhaps get a W in Stillwater for which they can write home about for homecoming. All right, that's it for me. There's...